I've got to go out now. So this is just a two minute vlog. I'll put some more on later. What was I going to say? I've got a lot of things to say. But the last video that I did was I went to Aaron and didn't get the job and it cost me £170 and 23 hours of my life and nothing's happened since and I've been thinking what's going on here why aren't I getting any offers of work because I've got a fantastic CV and a good work ethic and everything and then I was thinking about it and I thought well it is tourist industry and it is renowned for being dead in winter so then I thought right okay but that doesn't explain why I've been offered nothing in Halifax but that's I'm like okay I should be depressed and I have had bouts of it where I thought what's the point of everything and all this but something's inside me now saying something's about to happen again something I don't know so it's kind of lifted a bit because I feel like something's about to happen. The thing that I don't like is things always happen for me right on the last second. It's like getting stranded on a remote island with a few resources and you get to the point where you're on the last meal and you think this is it, I'm dead now, I'm going to die after this, this is it. And then a ship comes along and that's what my life reminds me of. It's always a last minute job something will come along and save me so I'm not going to fret over it I'm just going to just say okay um, I've been making organite I've got some um, I've been making organite so I'm going to show you that and I was thinking I might do some giveaways and give some of it away because I love organite I've been making key rings and pyramids it's a really funny thing, we live living next door to a couple and he is extremely violent. You hear him all the time screaming and shouting and he screams like a woman, you know, like really loud. And it's bad and you're like, oh my god, it, it's awful. You hear him, not her. So I don't like it. But since I've started making the Organite, he's calmed down. And I always associate Organite with calming people down. Because when I started making it a few years ago in my house, there was a barking dog, right? And it used to bark all night long and I wanted to kill it, even though I love animals. And I wanted to kill them for letting it because it was just crazy time. And it would drive everyone insane. And I like to sleep with my bedroom window open. And it got to a point where I couldn't because I couldn't sleep. Then I started making the organite and then one day I realised it was silent and I thought, dog's not barking and then I read up on Organite and it said it, it's really good in the environment because it calms people down and I thought hmm I, I think it does the next door neighbours is I haven't heard him screaming for over a week I should be depressed right now I should be depressed because I've I've got nothing left my car the MOT is due in f six weeks and I don't have an income at all. I don't have no income and I have no money left. So I should be shitting myself right now and going, oh my God. And I'm, part of me is like, I don't care. I'll just saw the car or sell it. I just don't care. I think I've died here, to be fair. I think a lot of it isn't positive thinking. It's just died because... This is the place of no hope. It is like a, an abandoned island. You come here just to rot. But I've got some great news. This is not great news for you, but for me. I have got a friend who makes FCD boxes, right? Otherwise known as ghost boxes. So they're like um, radios. And what you do is you ask a question and it tunes into the radio waves and the other side speak to you, okay? Well, I entered a, a raffle to win one and I won it. So he said he's posting it out today and I'm going to do a vlog on that. But that's exciting because for the longest time I have been getting signs out of somebody's ear with me. And I can't contact them 
and it's really frustrating because I can feel them and I can see what they do but I can't know who it is or what they want and I'm hoping that this box will help me with that so I will do a vlog on that as well I'm about to go out now to see my daughter she started her own business last January and it's doing really well so she's calling me more and more for help and I'll be looking after my grandson a lot he's beautiful so I'm going there every day doing something or another but and then taking doggies for a walk, but they don't live with me anymore. Uh, it's a shame. But anyway, I'm going to put some more of this on later because there's a few things I want to talk about. But I'll better. So it's now evening. It's about half past ten, quarter to eleven, or something like that. And I've just had a shower and cut my hair, and I've made the right mess of it because <laughs> I can't do it. But anyway, it doesn't matter. So, early when I was on about the ghost box and everything, and then I was going out. So, I went out with Paul and the doggies for a walk. And he told me that in a week or less, he's moving away. And he's going to be a few hundred miles away with the doggies. And I had a bit of a... I'd, I'd, I'd got choked up because I thought... I've been away from those doggies now for three months and I, I see them when I can but it, I just feel like there's, there's a lot to do here that I, I, anyway um, I felt really sad thinking that they're going to leave me again but it did offer for me to go there with him but I don't think I can cope with it I may do in the future if, <coughs> if nothing works out here I will maybe but I'm just finding it a struggle because who wants to live with the ex and it and when it becomes like an act of a desperation then I don't I don't want to be in that position anyway I want to be in a strong position now so this is what I've been doing recently anyway I've been doing some magic a candle magic I've never done it before but I thought I'll have a go with that and it's really funny because I won that ghost box and that is actually more than just winning a prize it, it's actually quite significant because that's going to really help me connect with the other side because I know I'm getting messages and I just can't understand who it is or what they want so that might help with that but after today something just hit me and I thought I I have the last four year five years has been all about giving up giving up that that is what I've done for four five years I have given up my wealth not that I ever had it wealth but you know what I mean I gave up security for home because I sold it and went away um, I gave up the ego because I used to argue with people because I, you know when you go through that phase in your conspiracy theory life <laughs> where you think you're superior to everyone else because you have all this knowledge and they're all thick and they're called sheeple and all that I had to, I've got rid of all that I don't even talk about stuff anymore I've just quit just quit because people if they don't want to hear things then don't don't tell it them just leave them so I gave up that I gave up my looks I used to be quite attractive and I made an effort with my appearance and everything and when I look back at my photos from like five years ago i don't even look like the same person i've given up vanity i've given up the the will to be part of society i don't want to be bothered with it anymore it's a funny thing you know when you walk out of society because you've had enough of all the constraints of it of trying to fit in when you don't you just don't fit in when you leave it's a spiritual thing it's not just a monetary thing or it's a spiritual thing it's almost like when you walk out of society on your terms thinking you're all clever like i'm going to go off and live off grid and i'm going to do all this because how many people say that's what they want right i went and did it i've lived off grid and it's not easy and it's not nice and you actually get to a point where you think 
this is miserable and there's a big thing going on at the minute which is starting to worry me and it's all these van life people all walking out of the system walking going in off into the vans and stuff and a lot of them that i'm watching are glamorizing it and making it look like it's a great thing to do you know and there's only a couple of people i've watched who were dead honest and and they show it for what it is and it's not glamorous it's actually really hard and grueling and it's a love-hate thing that you get when you live off grid because you love the fact that you're out of the system and you're not paying for utilities because they should be free anyway but what a lot of people forget to tell you is that it is bloody hard work trying to survive outside of the system now i mean at the moment i'm staying with my son so it's easy because there's a toilet shower sink <coughs> walls warm everything but when i've lived in my caravan with no water no electric unless it's on a pitch on an electric hookup i've lived in a tent with no water heat lights anything and it's just absolutely miserable and it's not easy because surviving that kind of lifestyle is a job in itself so that is to me personally is impossible to to live off grid completely and all down a full-time job because i spent so much time gathering wood collecting water finding somewhere to wash clothes and blah 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 and it becomes a job in itself but anyway i thought to leave the society because i've had enough of it all but once you're out of it you can't come back and it's a funny thing because I'm sat here and I've, I haven't had a, a home of my own for five years now. And I've had a, temp, a couple of temporary homes which were rented but they were scams. And not only that, they're not your home because they belong to somebody else and they leave their own stuff in there. And you're just an afterthought, just easy money. But it it's just not the same it's not the same as having your actual own home and being able to decorate your way and to decide you're not paying for electric so you put you get yourself off grid if if you go into a private rented house <clears throat> the restrictions in the uk are so bad now that it's not even worth the fight like no pets allowed that's your family you know so no family allowed in, in a rented house that you're paying for um you can't do the garden your way you, you can if it's council but not if it's um private landlord a lot of them say don't don't be planting things in the garden and why would you want to improve their property anyway because it isn't for you is it it's for them so i've got to this thing where i cannot i cannot go and get a, a rental i can't do it unless it's me paying for a house cash I cannot do it so the only alternative now is to carry on looking for living work and save up as much as possible and then buy a caravan a nice one that's got no damp and stuff and then find a, um, an all year round seasonal pitch and pay for it up front but to do that I'd have to do a full season and work really hard save really hard and then pay for that and that's the first step to get to where I want. But um, I've been looking at um, the living jobs, you know, on the caravan parks. And do you know what? Oh my gosh, some of the adverts are absolutely insane. One of them, um, looking for a retired couple to come and work for four days a week in return for free accommodation, no salary. And I'm like, hang on a minute. So I wrote to them and I went, what is this? How, how can you call it free accommodation if you're working four days a week to have it? That's not working. That, do you know what I mean? It's not free, is it? You're paying for it. And no salary. What do these people live on? What is? And the fact that they said retired couples, that means four days a week after you've retired means you haven't retired then, have you? You know, retired means no more work. So the fact they're asking for retired couples means, again, targeting the poorest people in society, people who can't afford to retire and probably can't afford to keep their own home. So come and live on our park. We'll give you some a caravan 
and in return you'll do four days work and I'm thinking that is absolutely disgusting because two people working for four days is the equivalent of one person working for eight days because there's two people right so eight days work in return for one week's lodging work that out that is a real scam a real massive scam a real scam because if you're working four days a week each so let's let's just say they're only working five hours a day so that's five that's 20 hours a week each so that's 40 hours a week for a couple minimum wage would be about just over 300 pounds a week so you're telling me for four days work which would be the equivalent of about 300 pounds that is just to pay to live in a house the cheeky buggers and the cheek of them saying free gas and electric and i'm like oh it's not free so i i wrote to them and said what do they live on fresh air and all this stuff i said i think it's disgusting there's no legislation or sorry there's no regulations in the tourist industry you know another one was um they wanted a couple to work on the park full time for seven pound 83 an hour so i wrote to them and said are you not aware that the new minimum wage is eight pound 21 an hour and even that is minimum wage it's you know if you want indecent people that have got a lot of the skills that you want and they want all singing dancing on these holiday parks you know um surely they should be paying more than minimum wage because you're only working for six seven eight months of the year that's it so surely to god they can afford to pay you a better wage than that so i wrote to them and again pointed out the flaws in the thing and the this is the best one this one this was um, a company that asked for a couple to come and do reception shop cleaning maintenance groundskeeping and said but that's not it because anybody could do that and i thought no the chuffing couldn't um we want someone who can do more than that minimum wage and i'm like oh is that right well, minimum wage for seven months of the year so i wrote oh and at the end of the advert they said we don't want to just employ anybody we want you to bend over backwards to prove why you're worth employing and i thought oh is that right and then they said do not phone the office and don't send a cv because that's what everyone does so i thought no they don't right so I'll, i'm gonna write to you so I emailed them and I said, um, could you please tell me what's so special about your company that I should have to bend over backwards to be employed by you when there's so many other jobs out there who should be bending over backwards to employ me? And I didn't expect to reply and they wrote back to me and said, please can you send your CV and a covering letter? And I couldn't stop laughing. And then it triggered something else off in me. I thought, I have actually lost everything these last five years, right? I've got down to the bare bones of, I own a car, right? And, and myself, and even that's gone to dogs, right? <laughs> I've got nothing left to lose. So, instead of applying for minimum wage jobs, I am now applying for management jobs, right? And I, I, I said, I don't know if I dare do it. And somebody said, just do it, because how do you know if you don't try? so this is a funny one i've applied for a job as a recruiter and my job would be to recruit people and i thought that's quirky isn't it so i've got to go to an interview if i get offered an interview which i probably won't but you never know um i get offered an interview as a recruiter they then recruit me and then i've got to recruit everyone else so i thought please call me for an interview right because i'm gonna go there and say you can leave the room and if they go, what you're talking about, I'll say, I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to, um, interview myself because the job's mine. It should be mine. You know, just give it to me now, because if I'm going to be recruiting everybody else, I might as well recruit myself as well, might I? Why, why would I not give myself the job and give someone else one? So do you know what? I want, I want the job probably, but that one is an hour and a half from here, which would be... <laughs> halfway between my doggies and my grandson so i'm thinking one week on 
my day off, I could maybe come down, see my grandson. And on the next week, I could maybe try and go up and see my doggies. It depends, because it is a long way. See, I'm trying to juggle people in my life now, because I've got to separate. Everything's about separation and letting go of, you know, and it's really hard. Sometimes I've, it makes me cry, and other times I get angry, and then other times I, I accept it and go, well, it has to be that way, so just let it be. But you go through a whole, whole range of emotions letting go, because you really are letting go of everything. You, But the power of nothing means it is powerful. When you've got nothing to lose, you dare do it. I dare go for a management job. Because I'm not going to lose my minimum wage job trying to get a management one because I don't have a job right now. <clears throat> I'm, I'm only applying for five star parks. Five star, right? Because they're higher quality and they're in nice places. They, you don't get five star hotels in council estates. You get them in rural areas and by the coast and things like that. So that they're the only ones I'm even applying for now. If I'm going to give myself a week, if in a week I don't have loads of interviews and jobs lined up and things like that, I'm going to sign on, but I don't want to. The thing about signing on though, I have already paid for it because I've worked for it, you know, and put into it, so I'm only taking back what some of what I've put in. But the thing, what they used to do, I don't know if they still do, is if you get an interview, even if it's like 700 miles away, it, as long as it's in this country, <coughs> um, they will pay for the petrol or travel expense to go for an interview as long as you prove you're going. So that might help me actually because if I go for all these jobs and they're all hours and hours away, it does cost a lot of money in petrol to do it. So I might just have to do it. But anyway, I'm not going to fret over it anymore. I think. Christmas is soon and I didn't want to celebrate it because I don't believe in it anymore because life has got to be on my terms now, not trying to please other people and fitting around their view of what is right and wrong and everything. I'm on my own journey and I decide what I want and what I don't want. I don't really want to be bothered with it anymore. I haven't celebrated Christmas since I left my house five years ago because... I've been either been alone or I've been homeless or I've been in a really crappy situation that I've, I've just not enjoyed being there and I've had no money to enjoy Christmas. So it's waiting for me one day. It's like lying dormant. So one day I will celebrate Christmas, but only when I get what I want, which is my own home. I'm not celebrating it if I haven't. Because there's no point. Last year I was at Dream Zine and I worked on Christmas. So that was good because I didn't have to bother trying to pretend I wanted it when I didn't. So it was it was a nice day there because I, I was around people who were enjoying themselves and that. But I didn't have to, you know, I just enjoyed it for their sake. But I, I didn't have to go home and pretend I wanted one. So, yeah. Things are just up in the air right now and who knows what's happening. But do you know what? <clears throat> when I look at, if you wrote down my life on paper right now, you'd go, you're in a bad place. Things are not good. You've got every right to feel depressed and angry and upset. And I do go like that. It's like a bipolar roller coaster. <laughs> it's like, I can feel really, really, really down and think what's wrong with me that I can't get a job and I can't keep somebody and I can't keep my dogs and, and all the rest and then the next time I'm like well of course you feel like that because that's okay because anybody would in this situation because you are homeless and you are destitute you've got no job and you're not signing on and you've you've got no social life or anything going on because you've cut everything off then in the next breath I'm like but that's actually a good thing because it's all waiting for me somewhere else and in the future, isn't it? Because life is never always the same. You, you can get to feeling really, really, really depressed and think, what is the point in being alive? This is just shite. 
but you don't feel like that every minute of the day, every day of the week. Even depressed people have moments of grey. It's not all black, you know. And I think when I when I get down now, I just tell myself it's okay to feel that way, and I just let it. I just let myself feel it, and then I let it pass away. Then it goes grey, and then every now and again, it's like the sun comes out. And it's like, there is a future, you know. It, it doesn't have to stay like this. So, something is waiting for me. When you look at it for what it is, you'd, you'd have to say something like, things can't get much worse. <laughs> they can get worse, but not really much worse because, I, I, like I said, I've got nothing left to lose, have I? The power of nothing. And I think what I'm going to do is just keep ploughing on and just I'm going to let the doggies go and be happy that they've got a home because that's important for them um, they, they need stability and security and, and I know in my mind I can go there if I want I don't have to stay down here if I don't want to And so it's there I can tell myself that I don't have to go but I can go if I want and there is a job waiting for me somewhere in the future by somebody who really appreciates me because I'm not going to just go for any old job there's plenty to choose from soon when the season starts I don't have to settle for a crap job with a crap manager and a crap location I can, I can, I can be wherever I want and do whatever I want and no one's going to stop me so why, why worry about that right now it's there and once I get there, I'll have money again. And when I've got money again, then I'll feel good again because I'll have money. And that has um, a knock-on effect on the positive. And you never know who I'll meet in the future, you know. I might make some really good friends somewhere. and You, you just don't know what's around the corner, do you? But all my... I do tarot cards readings and all of them have been really positive. So, And they all talk about a move... And it's really funny, I went on Facebook today and you know you get those Facebook memories. Well, the ones that came up today are all from five years ago, which is quite ironic because after the day that I've had, it's been like a, a roller coaster, you know. And it was really funny, I wrote a poem. I haven't got it in front of me now, but it was basically a premonition, which is really cool. And I wrote this poem before I left for Scotland before I knew what was going to happen to me, before I knew where I was going. And I wrote a poem about the white house, the white cottage on the end of a long drive with the open fire and the piano singing in the living room and meeting my best friend for life. And what happened on Ling? I got a white cottage at the end of a massive long drive with an open fire and that's where I met Paul. And he'll always be my friend, even though we're not a couple anymore. He'll always be my friend. So I, it was actually a premonition. And when I read it, I thought, oh, my God, I forgot I wrote that. And and I thought it was quite funny how that memory came up today of all days. On the day that something snapped in my mind and I thought, I'm not doing this no more. I am not applying for minimum wage jobs anymore. I want a management position up, <laughs> up as in my own company. And to get that, I have to work towards that. So one step at a time. But something's changed. And I think behind the scenes in the other, there's something positive getting lined up for me. And I think I will find a job where I am really appreciated. Because some people like brave people who stand up for others and say, let's make this the best place to work. Let's have a great team and... Let's all be happy and support each other. And some people actually want that kind of person rather than a, a psychopath who destroys everyone and gets them all going and leaving in tears, you know. Somebody wants me. So, and I, and I do believe that <clears throat> there's the perfect person for every, everybody. I've, I've got a future partner waiting one day. I've got a future best friend waiting one day. I've got a future home, a future great career and... In the far future, I've got my land. I have got my land waiting for me. 
with my own property and my own um, holiday park that is it and I'm not settling for anything less so I'm going to go because it's quite late I've just fixed my tooth and I'm hoping it works and I'm going to go and get something to eat and then I'm going to watch some Christmassy things and try and get it mood for it but anyway it'll be fu it'll be funny because uh, my next update will be when I get the ghost box and I'm going to do a vlog on that one anyway I'm going to go now so I'll see you later if, I, if I'm not on before Christmas happy Christmas to every single person that's watching um, I hope you get what you want if it's nothing that's fine you know we, we're all it's free will isn't it anyway i'm gonna go so thank you